Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today and we are back again for another episode, this time for the British Grand Prix, my home race here at the legendary Silverstone Circuit. If you guys missed the last episode at Austria, you can go watch it by clicking the link in the top right hand corner of your screen before we jump into any spoilers. But for this episode, we are here for my home race at Britain and there is no chance of rain straight away on the weather forecast, which is good to see. We also have two upgrades in the car, but they are both for durability slash reliability purposes which is uh, going to be important for the longevity of the engine over the season and uh, more specifically the MG UK and also the energy store so those two were two components that needed improving they are quite worn at the moment and both of them I believe are around 60% wear and I'm going to try and push on with them and use them in this race because this is a good opportunity for us because the AI aren't that great around Silverstone having said that you can see on screen Red Bull respond to our latest upgrade push and they swing it back around they take the lead once again in the R and D update race if you will but um, the battle between us both is fierce it's really really competitive at the top and uh, both teams trying to strive for absolute greatness here this season and in practice we had a pretty good session you know even with the worn out engine we uh, got all purple on all the scores so it's a good way to start the weekend and generally speaking the car is working well you know I do enjoy Silverstone on F1 games ever since 2017 when the regulations came in Silverstone has been a lot more fun because of the quicker cars and um those high speed corners are just absolutely fantastic you can really it, you get a real big sense of satisfaction when you absolutely nail a lap around this circuit and that's what's so special about it because it's such a high speed race track with a couple of slow, slower speed corners mixed in which makes it a real nice balance and ultimately one of the, the racers favourite circuits but this weekend guys we are using 110% AI once again so we're hopefully we can have a good weekend on our hands and it's going to be an exciting session. In the meantime, guys, just a quick plug. Uh, yesterday, I did a video where I actually tried to qualify for F1 Esports. So I tested my skills against the very best in the world. If you guys want to see how I got on in that video, and it's also, if you will, a tutorial for you guys, if you want to go try one day and I give you some tips and tricks, then go watch the video, guys, by clicking the link in the top right-hand corner of the screen. I think it's quite an interesting video and I've done a few of them in the past and I quite enjoy them. So I'd like you guys to give that, that type of content a chance, possibly moving into the future. But having said that, now we're going to focus on the time in hand here this weekend and we are here for qualifying and business as usual and also focus is at a high here you know we want to try and do well in this session and really maximize this because the higher we qualify obviously the better we start the race and hopefully we can get a good start on the race and try and control the race so I am aiming for pole position here even though we don't have the quickest car and the engine is quite worn out I feel confident I can pull this off and even though the last race in Austria we had the quickest car yet we really struggle for pace both myself and Giovinazzi I'm expecting a bit more of a normal one this weekend, running a special edition British Grand Prix helmet this weekend. You can see on, on the helmet there, running the British Union Jack, if you will. But uh, here we go then into Q1, and oh, no dramas really. Q1 was very smooth. Uh, this was my first and only lap in the session. It was very comfortable, and we pretty much matched Verstappen sector for sector, and even to the point where we actually went identical through sector 2, 0.000. .000 and uh, really, really close between the pair of us here. But eventually, we, we would finish the lap, and uh, we lost a little bit more time in the final sector. But overall, it was a close one. And uh, we do go P2, though, with a 24.4. So a decent lap to kick things off. And overall, the car showing pretty good pace as we move into the end of Q1, into the results. You can see that eventually Leclerc uh, just managed to get in front of us, and also Verstappen improved to a 24.1. Meanwhile, Giovinazzi only in P12 in the other Williams, and he seems to be struggling for pace this weekend compared to myself, so he might struggle to make it through Q2 at that kind of pace. But speaking of which, we're going to run on board now for a full lap of the Silverstone Circuit here in Q2, and let's see if the lap is good enough to get into the final part of qualifying. So straight away, through Turn 1, easily flat through here. Turn 2 as well, easily flat. You're looking at the 100 meter board slash 50. It kind of depends where your confidence is. If you can break towards the 50, that's where you run a break for turn three. I've run a bit wide and missed my apex, but I managed to get the car opened up wide and bring it back across for a good exit out of turn four as we go flat out through five and then onto the Wellington straight. So far, a pretty standard sector one with a bit of a missed apex at turn three, but we're only a tenth of a second down on Verstappen here as we go into, I believe, I believe it's Brooklyn now, into Luffield. Just going to try and have patience here. Then get the power down as soon as you can. Use all the curb on the exit if you need to, to uh, maximise your traction. And now along the old pit straight, using overtake ERS along here to maximise top end speed. As we now throw the car in at the 50 metre board as your reference for Cops Corner. The old turn one, just about going flat out there. And now down the hill towards Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel. This is all about car setup, having that confidence to just throw the car in and really commit to those curbs. And uh, we actually get a really good line through here, getting a fantastic exit, opening up the DRS and uh, a purple middle sector once again. That was definitely my strongest sector 
all weekend long. Sector 1 was pretty my weakest sector, and Sector 3 I could just about match the AI. So that's kind of what we're looking at this weekend as we go through Stow, carrying a nice bit of exit speed there. Now down the hill towards the heavy brake zone of Val, really throwing the car in and then into club. Again, just carrying the momentum, being easy on the throttle here, very easy to spin the car as we now run up to the line and the lap is going to be a 24.2, only a tenth off the pace and that will be more than good enough to get us into Q2. But in the meantime, a quick reminder slash, uh, just showing you guys the engine where you can see the Energy Store and the MG UK and also the Control Electronics, they're still the original components from Race 1, they haven't changed them yet, but especially the Energy Store and the MG UK need a bit of... Um, you know, a bit of love because we, that's why we put the upgrades on the car. We're going to try and push through and do the race with those components because then I should be able to get to the end of the season on those com on the new components, um, you know, for the remaining races. But you can see on the screen, we go through the Q3 in fourth place. Giovinazzi knocked out in P13. And overall, very close there because six drivers, or the top six drivers, should I say, covered by a tenth of a second. So very close, very competitive. But then in Q2, in Q3, sorry, we went out for two runs in this session. And I can't lie, I was a little bit disappointed. I, um, I think I peaked a bit too early. My Q2 lap was probably better than these two. And um, I didn't quite hook up the lap that I knew I had in, you know, in me. I think I'm quite good at pulling out a special lap in Q3 and finding another two, three, four tenths. But it didn't quite happen this time. And uh, you'll see here, we cross the line. We do a 24.1 on my first attempt, which is my quickest lap of the weekend up until this point. And I thought to myself, okay, that's pretty good. I can definitely improve on that, though. There's more time to find. And sector one is where I was losing a lot of time. I couldn't get it right. And I think it was because of the brake bias. I tried 56 and it didn't quite work. It was giving a bit of instability on the braking at the rear end. And you'll see here, through set one and two, it's absolutely fine so far. But here, I just got the braking a bit wrong. And I completely missed the apex and run very wide, which cost me some time. And then into turn four here, you'll see, we try to get the pan down a bit earlier. And we get some oversteer, which is going to cost me some more time. So not ideal. And we are down in sector one. And I was already three tenths down on my previous attempt so this isn't going to help and unfortunately now we've got to try and find some more lap time and uh, sector two on my last lap was really really strong we actually went purple so i know there's not much more time to find here other than maybe a, a, a couple of thousands of a second really it's very very close but you can see here we are up by a fraction the smallest margins as we now go towards cops we're going to actually keep it flat out this time around and carry all the speed possible and we do improve by a little bit more but uh, now we go into Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel here and you'll see again a bit of a mistake once again as we get a bit loose through the right hander there and just go onto the grass. I kind of got some mid corner oversteer, the back end came round and uh, we lost some more time and we're a tenth and a half down as, a, as the checker flag drops here in Q3. So it's looking unlikely to beat Verstappen who's currently sitting with a 23.7, the only man in the 123 so far as we go towards Val here just throwing the car in again and I knew there was a bit of time here as we really attack club and find two tenths of a second through there. Really, really nice run. And we actually end up improving by a fraction. But there was a couple of big mistakes in there. You know, at turn three and uh, t on the exit of turn four. And then also, of course, in uh, Magus Beckus and Chapel. And overall, I think a 23 was easily possible. I don't know if I would have beaten Verstappen. That would have been very, very close. But I definitely think a 0.8, uh, maybe a high 0.8, low 23.9 was definitely achievable. And uh, I let myself down a bit. I, I definitely should have been at least in the front row. That, that, that was the minimum target. And I let, I let that one go. Unfortunately, Leclerc improved after us and he went quicker. So I'm quite disappointed that we didn't quite put it in the front row. But that is it for qualifying here at Silverstone, guys. And overall, a disappointing Q3. But that being said, we're now going to move into the race for round 10 for the British Grand Prix. We're right back where it all began. The very first World Championship Grand Prix was held here at Silverstone in 1950, with Giuseppe Farina taking the top step of an all Alfa Romeo podium. He earned nine championship points that day on his way to the inaugural title. His winning total at the season's end, just 30 points. By how times have changed. So let's see who can reach the top step of the modern podium today. The 3.6 mile long Silverstone circuit is one of the longest of the season with 18 corners in the current layout. With average lap speeds reaching around 145 miles per hour, it's also one of the quickest tracks of the year. Watch out for cars taking the right-handers of Abbey and Cops flat out. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's have a chat about McLaren. They've had to retire a couple of times in the last few races. What can you tell us about the reliability of their car? It's a good statistic for sure, as it demonstrates not only mechanical reliability, but consistency from both drivers as well. These are two of the first boxes you have to tick for any successful season. 
It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Martinez, Vettel, George Russell and Perez, Magnussen, Gasly, Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas, Fiat, Ricardo, Antonio Giovinazzi and Albon, Sainz, Hülkenberg, Lando Norris and Kimi Raikkonen, Stroll and Roman Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, here we are then on the grid for the British Grand Prix, starting from third place on the grid, on the clean side of the grid, but having said that, I wanted that front row start and it's not going to happen. Having said that, the target is simple. I want to be aggressive, get a good start and try and hit the front on lap one and try and pull away and hopefully try and win this race. That's the target. I want to win in front of my home crowd and that would be my first ever win in my home race and I really want to try and make that happen. As uh, so We got so close last season, it didn't quite work out because of... Um, the conditions we got it a bit wrong we was battling for the win in what was at the time you know a lower end car but um we almost pulled it off because of the conditions but this year i want to make sure i do execute the win perfectly and strategy will be key for that because i don't trust this soft tire i think it's going to wear out and also it's going to overheat i think quite a lot so we might not come into the race until we get into the medium so it's important like i said to hit the front and try and control the race from first place and not have you know dirty air overheating our tires but in terms of fuel we're running the lowest possible which is still 1.4 laps over which is a hell of a lot of fuel so we can be aggressive and really try and use it and like i said i want to try and be p1 at the end of the first lap so with that being said let's just get into it let's get into the action and let's try and win this home race and hopefully we can try and get back onto the top step of the podium and score a big fat 25 points here we go then let's try and get a good start here as we get ready for the british grand prix lights out and away we go and it's a fantastic start we're going to get the launch we're going to get the jump on leclerc and we're going to get close to verstappen here verstappen carrying the momentum but we're all over the back of him here I'm going to have a look on the brakes, but Verstappen holds on for now, but it's a good start. Getting past Charles Leclerc. Let's see if we can get past Verstappen here. Do you want to try and get a good exit out of turn four? Verstappen does get good traction, so I can't quite get the slipstream here down towards Luffield or Brooklyn, so say, first of all. But let's keep the pressure on. Let's see if we can have a strong first lap. Maybe try and have a look on the, on the hangar straight, on the back straight. A little bit wide there into Luffield. That's going to hurt us a little bit. Let's try and make sure Leclerc doesn't get the run. I've got to try and stay close to Verstappen so that I can hopefully attempt an overtake on him. Let's keep it in rich mix for now. A little bit of a downshift through Cops. Not quite confident through there yet. So far, so good. We're staying close to Max. Let's try and carry the momentum. Go through Maggots and Beckett's. Very nice line. Keep it tidy through the last one. A little bit of dirty air kicking in. No DRS. I think that's going to hurt us as we try to have a look, but I think we're a bit too far back. If I had the RS, I think I could execute it, but we don't. So, uh, Verstappen will stay in front for now. But the good news is we've hit second place. And it's a good start off the line when it matters in our home race. Leclerc looking for a move there behind us. Important to also keep him behind. I don't want to lose more places or go backwards in this race. So, uh, got to try and manage our pace. But so far, so good. Let's try and stay within a second of Verstappen and try and pick up some DRS on the next lap. We're accumulating some wear on the MG. Here comes Leclerc, he's going to go around the outside. I can stay in front quite easily though, it's not a concern. The AI at the moment running full engine power, which is something I can't quite do. And I don't normally do it anyway because I want to have that extra bit of power to use later on. But we're going to have to use some of it just to keep Leclerc behind because he's really going for it here. He's got the run again into Cops. He's going to look around the outside but there's no way through there. But he's still keeping the pressure on. As we're going to Maggots and Beckett's, he's really not letting me off the hook here. This could get dangerous. We're going to hold on around the outside. And there we go. We'll remain in front for now. But I've got to try and find some pace here. I've got to try and pick it up. Just happens really pulled away as well. Let's try and get head down and uh, open up the gap a bit because this isn't ideal for us. Not a good lock up there. Just going to put Leclerc right on the back of me. We do get a good exit, but he's going to have the RS, so it's going to make it very easy for him to get past. Here he comes. I've got to defend the inside. Leclerc the long way round. We're going to go late on the brakes. There we go. Hold on to that. Struggling for pace on the soft tyres at the minute. 
I never do well starting the race on the softs. I never have. I always struggle. I think it's because they just overheat so easily. Here comes the clear again. We're going to have to show him the long way around. Although he's not quite committing to a move here. So we'll take the racing line for a change. And we can stay in front. Let's look at the tyres real quick. 105 on the front left. It's on the limit. Any more than that and we'll be overheating. So I've got to be careful. Okay, personal best. We're just starting to pull away from Leclerc a bit now. He's turned his engine down. Hopefully I can start to open up a gap now and try to pull away. I don't want this having to get too far ahead. I want to have a chance of getting back at him on the medium tyre. So I've got to try and pick up my own pace if I can. Let's see if we can remain unattacked on this straight for a change. I'm going to turn the engine up just to see if I can keep my position. No, nope, here comes the close. He's got a lot of straight on speed. You can tell the difference when the AI turned the engine up. It's so difficult to contain them. But we are going to stay in front. I can do this all day. This is not a problem for me. It's just the fact I'm sacrificing my lines into every single corner to keep Leclerc behind, which is not what I want. He's going to get another run on me here. We're going to have to turn the engine up again. Here he comes. He's gaining. We're going to cover the inside. I'm a bit wide this time. That's going to hurt me on the exit again. Leclerc is not giving me a moment's peace. Luckily, we'll stay in front. Crucially into here. Just when I think I'm building some momentum, Leclerc turns his engine up and keeps me under control. We've had a good exit though. I think I should be okay into Stowe, even though Leclerc is gaining. Oh no, no I'm not. He's actually flying off the back of me. Oh my days. Around the outside, no chance. We'll keep that one under control. But he's still on my rear end here, so we've got to be careful. This is costing me so much time, it really is. This is the problem with Silverstone's slipstream is so powerful. At least for the AI, not so much for me it seems, but it is a factor. Luckily, we're not under attack at the turn one, so we can continue on. I've got to try and pull away now, I really have to, but my ERS is quite low as well. There's been an issue a bit further back, not quite sure what it is, but we'll continue on. I think this at the final corner, can be rifling out again, that McLaren, one of the most unreliable cars on the grid. Let's see if I can get a good exit out of here. We're doing a good job of keeping the club behind now, but he seems to have turned his engine up a bit. Luckily, I've managed to save a bit of ERS and fuel. Leclerc's coming at me again here, but we should be able to stay in front, I think. Leclerc having a look down the inside, but we're going to just hold on. There we go. Hopefully I can improve my pace as the tyres start to fade a bit. I'm seemingly doing a bit better now. I do feel a bit better, and uh, I don't feel so much pressure from Leclerc, but the straight line speed and slipstream is really starting to affect me. Leclerc's going to look down the inside of Cops there. I didn't expect that. And again, he's putting more pressure on. It's costing me time. He's going to look to the left-hand side here. This is not going to end well for him. I'll be okay. But this is costing me so much time. These stupid places where you wouldn't normally pass, having to adapt my racing line. But Stappen's nearly five seconds up the road already now. And here comes Leclerc again. I can't put up with this. I've got a red ball behind as well. George Russell. I need to get on that medium tire. I don't feel bad. My pace doesn't feel bad. It's just the fact that... The car seems to not be performing, which is kind of annoying. As we enter the yellow flag zone, no one can overtake me here, so we should be okay. But we're snapping so far ahead, man. I've got to try and find something in this race. I'm hoping the medium tyre is a great tyre because we're so far behind. Leclerc again, he's flying this time. The slipstream is really becoming a problem around here. It's just so powerful. DRS as well is so powerful. Leclerc's looking for it. I'm losing so much time per lap. I just, I'm not allowed to settle into the race and do my pace. I just can't relax and do my lap times. But it's so frustrating. Here he comes again. I've just got no straight line speed at all. We'll keep him behind, but it's just frustrating. I'm going to turn the front wing down for the next stint because I need something. I'm really struggling. And I wouldn't even say it's down to the engine. I, th I could have a fresh power unit and I'd, I'd have the exact same issues. I really would. It's just frustrating. I've used so much of my spare fuel as well, which I was hoping to use later on as well in this first stint. Just nothing's going my way so far. Really frustrating race. Here comes the clue again. I mean, look how he's gaining in the mirrors. You can just see visually how he flies up to me. This is why we need these engine upgrades in the car. It's becoming a problem now and we need to improve engine power. 
but we have to get through the stupid fuel consumption and also the ERS upgrades first to get to engine power, which is really annoying. Okay, finally, Leclerc is not troubling me, and I'm setting some decent pace. A purple sector too, but with DRS, of course, Leclerc just gets straight back into my range. It's so annoying, I can't shake him off. If I'd had DRS on Verstappen in the first couple of laps, I would have been on, still on his gearbox. It's just the fact in the first few laps he didn't have DRS, so I couldn't keep up with Verstappen. Otherwise, I would have DRS on him every single lap. But uh, you see now Leclerc's turned the engine up, and now he's on my gearbox all the time. I was meant to suppose to pit lap 12, but I'm debating whether to change that back to the original lap 10 because I might just have to get off this tyre and pit and hopefully that will do the difference and I can pull away from Leclerc because I can't seem to shake him off at the minute. Or Leclerc pits and I risk getting undercut by staying out and try to overcut. But look at the speed Leclerc's got this time. I do block him off on the inside. A little bit of a late one from me, but you know what? I don't really care. Pitting this lap then. Come into the pits at the end of this lap. There goes Leclerc around the outside. I'm going to box in. I've had enough of this. I want to try something different. If it means I've got more tire wear, I've got more tire wear. But I need to shake off Leclerc. I can't be doing this constant battling thing. It's just costing me too much time. So we're going to box in. I'm going to try and undercut using the fresh rubber. And try and switch on those mediums. Hopefully Russell can give Leclerc a few problems as well. That would help me out. But I've had enough of this constant slipstreaming. You know, I, I, I need to get away from it. It's doing my head in. And, I, and I'm... You know, I've got patience normally, but it's really starting to affect me. So here we go. Good stop, please. Exit now. You'll be racing as you leave the pits. Release, release. Right, there we go. 1.861. Lots of cars in front of us there. A massive train, but we shouldn't catch them, I don't think. They're all on soft tyres, so they should also all pit in probably. Up to speed now. Let's get some heat into those tyres. Getting a bit of oversteer there on the exit. A la Grosjean, but not spinning it. Got to try and push straight away on these and give it everything. Can't afford to lose any time. I'm expecting Leclerc and uh, Russell to pit on lap 12. So let's just really push and give it everything on these. I'm going to try and use standard engine mode and not go any higher than that. I don't really have much fuel left or ERS. So let's just hope this is enough. Let's get head down. It's sweating season. Plenty of cars pit in. Currently on a pretty good lap here. Personal best and fastest middle sector. Let's have a look at the pit exit. There's Leclerc, I think, leaving the pit exit now. Yes, it is. So there he is. I think we've done enough. He's a little bit closer. I would have liked to have set up one more lap. I think he's still somehow within my DRS. I can't believe it. He's still there. So annoying. He is further back, but with DRS, he's going to get straight back onto the back of me. So I need these cars in front to help me out. Well, I've turned the engine up, so hopefully I can get DRS on Lando Norris here. And that can give me a bit of a boost on the back straight. I'm going to get held up here a little bit, I think. Behind the house. There we go. We're going to try and get alongside. No, nope. Norris swipes across. And here comes Leclerc. It's worked out horribly wrong. And here comes Leclerc. He's going to try and power past. We've got a defender around the outside. Going very late on the brakes around the outside. But nothing's working out my way in this race so far. I'm really struggling. My pace doesn't feel that bad. It's just the fact the slipstream is so powerful. I'm going to try and have one quick lap here where I try and pull away from Leclerc. There's Russell leaving the pit exit now. But let's try and push this lap. Okay, Russell's overtaking Leclerc behind us. Hopefully those two battle away. I'm trying to pull away here. That's the opening I needed. I needed Russell to get involved. I've had a good lap here. I might have just done enough. Let's keep pushing. They're nine tenths behind. It's going to be close. Russell will have DRS on me as I'm on for a fast lap of the race. No, I think Russell's managed to hold on, unfortunately. Even using a, a track extension to really give it everything, it hasn't worked out. Now we've got to keep a red ball behind, so our pain in this race and misery continues. I need the two of them to battle between themselves, that's what I need. And it's just not happening. Personal best, 28-0. Pace is okay, but again, slipstream, I can't shake off Russell. But he's not really challenging me at the minute. But I'm so low now on fuel in the RS, I can't really continue this much longer. I might have to let someone go and just use their slipstream and try and save fuel in the RS while sitting behind them because I can't keep doing this. It's really frustrating me. Leclerc's struggling to hold on, but here comes Ross. I'm going to let him go. I'm just going to do a different race. They're both going to go down the inside here. I think it's three wide. Oh dear. They've both gone. Okay, fair enough. Just let them go. I'm not even bothered. I'm losing too much time. 
and I can't, I just can't stretch them out front. It's, it's really, really pissing me off. So let them get on with it. See, this is what I wanted them to do, but behind me. Now, now all of a sudden in front of me, now they're doing it. It's really annoying. I wish they'd done that the, the entire first stint. But I've got to try and save fuel in the RS while this happens. This is my chance. And now I get to sit in their DRS and wait. Russell's trying to pull the pin here. Both myself and Leclerc are struggling to hold on. We're still within DRS range, but Russell's really trying to pull away here, so we've got to keep up and uh, find some more pace as I pick up my second track extension there. By running wide at Cops, dirty air playing in effect. I wonder if I can get past Leclerc. I'd like to get in between both of these guys, preferably. I am saving fuel in the RS, but I'd like to save a bit more as well. I think I might have dropped out of the RS range here. The lack of straight line speed in this car is becoming a problem now, it really is. We've just hold on to the RS there, I had to turn the engine up though, because uh, we're barely hanging on. These two are really showing some strong pace though, as Charles Leclerc goes for the move on George Russell. I'm going to have to be very, very tricky to get this move back. I can't see myself taking second place back at the minute. I don't have the pace. Leclerc fastest lap, 26.7. I can't match that pace, unfortunately. They're too quick. And I've now dropped out of the RS range, 100%. They're just slipstreaming each other, and I can't match it. I've dropped out of the RS, and I can't get back in. I just can't do it. I don't have the pace. I don't think we've got a response to these two, unfortunately. I'm trying so hard to get back within DRS. I'm turning the engine up and using up everything I've got left to hopefully get within a second. I think I am now, which is good. So that takes some pressure off. I can go back to saving a bit of fuel in the RS, hopefully. But I need to get closer to these two, really. I'm struggling to get power down as well. We're already back out of a second. You can see visibly how much we lose on traction compared to the AI. I just don't have the pace anymore. These two are going side by side all the time now. It's literally constant. I wish it would happen in the first stint. It didn't happen once. And now they're constantly going side by side. But now I'm behind them. I don't have the pace, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, it's looking like a P4 for us here today. Not much we can do. Only one lap of fuel remaining. And, yeah, overall, not much we can do, really. Just, you know, considering we're using a worn engine, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. I said at the start of the weekend, it's not the reason I'm struggling for pace because it doesn't really affect me. It's just the fact I can't charge my battery with 100%. Other than that, it's fine. We're, we're just lacking pure engine power. It's simple as that. Um, if you will, we've got a bit of a GP2 engine in the words of Fernando Alonso. And it is starting to become an issue. I've noticed in the last few races, but now it's becoming a glaringly obvious problem. Here we go then, last lap of the race. Just happened 26.2. Just setting the final death blow for the fastest lap. I'm on a personal best, I'm going to try my best to go for it, but we're not going to be nowhere near it. And Leclerc's going to take second place, and the Russell P3, and we're going to come across and get a disappointing fourth place. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. Let's push harder next time, okay? Red Bull pulling out all the stops today. What a great win. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Right, so here are the final race results and we finish off what you could consider to be a disappointing race weekend, but a bit of a reality check in many ways, I think. We are the second quickest car, but these kind of circuits where it's purely engine power, 
we're starting to struggle. You know, I noticed in Austria in the last race, we was down quite away. And today I noticed once again, as Verstappen wins for Red Bull, Charles Leclerc gets second and Russell makes it a 1-3 for Red Bull. We get fourth place. We miss out on the podium in our home race. Disappointing considering the good start we had. And in hindsight, I wish I'd been more aggressive and really launched one down the inside at turn three and Verstappen to try and take first place and make it last. But... Uh, it is what it is. Perez P5, Sebastian Vettel P6, Magnussen P7, and then we've got both Mercedes, Hamilton and Bottas, 8th and 9th, and Kafiat rounding out the top 10 with signs missing out on points, along with Giovinazzi, Gasly, Ricardo Stroll, Hulkenberg, Norris, Grosjean, Albon, and Kimi Raikkonen retiring from the Grand Prix here today for McLaren. But in terms of what that means for the standings, our gap has been considerably reduced now. Verstappen winning that race and picking up the fast lap now reduces the gap to 5 points going into the German Grand Prix, where we do have an engine upgrade on the way, but it's for the the ERS not for the engine power which is what we need so it is what it is we'll try and you know keep him off one more race but I think we might lose the lead in the next couple of races but George Russell in the meantime up to P5 overtaking Magnussen and Leclerc still P7 even though they've got second place here today and yeah overall I think we might lose the lead to Verstappen in the next couple of races but we might have to fight back in the second half of the season going into like Monza Singapore those kind of races in terms of the constructors though we're in third place we've lost a bit of ground to Red Bull and Racing Point and at the minute the Red Bull are starting to just edge away a bit and it's becoming a three-way scrap for second place between Ferrari ourselves and Red racing point but guys that is going to be it for this video here today and we're going to save up our r&d points because i want to invest in the engine therefore we need to purchase an engine upgrade in the next race and um, until the one we got on the way arrives we can't buy one so uh, we're gonna have to wait until that one arrives in the next race hopefully fingers crossed it doesn't fail but guys that is it for this video if you enjoyed it drop a like and also get subscribed if you are new for daily formula one content and also turn on notifications to not miss any videos from me and also finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them but other than that guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next episode very soon but until then it's goodbye from me